Hey y'all. Hey dreamers, hey loved ones, hey friends, hey family, hey all. So, um, happy new moon, yeah. It's a new moon today on December 14th, 2020. And yeah, there's some magical, power, powerful potency at play. And of course, this whole month has been magical and full of potent gifts to claim, be aware of, acknowledge, um, receive and honor and yeah let those be and come through and come forth call them forth calling them in and forth and through our being our ways of being and like there's a lot of interesting things playing out right now playing in and out <laughs> through our relationships and it's the inner and outer stage and yeah it's been wild it's been a crazy ride and yeah, a crazy ride on the wheel. Um, this year, like cycle, the wheel is a symbol for the you know cycles and uh, continuity and never ending. Um, yeah, never ending cycles of being and becoming and change and growth and creation. Like, and there's like yeah, the three aspects of that: the creator, the sustainer, and the destroyer. And that's what keeps it all in motion, you know? And we've been resisting a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, myself included, especially, of course. And letting go is like one of the hardest things because sometimes we don't like, um, you know, like the, our feelings of fear of the unknown and we like to stick with what we know sometimes. And we want that like reinforced and we want that to stabilize us and we want that to make us feel comfortable and. Um, we want to be able to think that we can predict it all and that we, yeah, are in control of it all. But yeah, that's not honoring of who we are, what we are, what life is. And so been guided to let go of a lot of things that just are no longer serving me or the whole or the integrity of the whole that haven't been serving my relationships, um, myself or the other involved, um, in a lot of ways. And change can be hard and it can feel devastating, like the tower collapsing. And like, yeah, we've been so resistant to change and like we want change, but yet it's in certain ways we have a hard time showing up for that or actually like putting our energy into um, that which serves us instead of that which helps us stay comfortable or really um, is familiar. And yeah, that's like kind of where we trip ourselves up, where we get in our own way, where we recycle our um, our suffering and our pain and our trauma and keep creating the same things uh, through like certain different ways. And like we've been totally kind of unconscious of that. Like we're becoming more aware of that now. And yeah, now is the time to become aware of what we're creating now of what's being created and what's been created, what's being created now. And so, yeah, it's like a personal responsibility and, and like accountability and like, um, the willingness to acknowledge what part we've parts we've played and, um, yeah, just being able to see more clearly into those things. And um, the patterns that are falling away that we yeah get to shift and um, allow to fall away, even though it's really uncomfortable. And because yeah, it's we're moving into a time where yeah, it is the unknown and yeah, and the known and the unknown get to play together. And like, yeah, honoring that exchange and going with the flow, being in flow, being flow, <laughs> flowed, yeah, flowing and yeah, letting go. So yeah, I've been let, working with letting go like a, a lot for the last little while, gosh. And i um, been having lots of dreams lately that have just been blowing my mind because they're just so what I needed to like see things and through clear 
uh, more full ways and um, understand like what was happening like in and through my relationships and in and through like the my own inner world and um, yeah what I've created what I've helped co-create and yeah my part that I played in creating what is and what will be and what's been so <laughs> that's a lot like I mean and it's not always comfortable like seeing all those things and seeing ourselves you know where we haven't seen like our responsibility and our power and our bullshit and our ability to change and because yeah we, we've had like different mechanisms and survival strategies that have kept us stuck in place and um kept us in fear or pain or confusion um so that we can fit in or belong or um be comfortable or be in the familiar or um, give our power away and let someone else be responsible for the changes or yeah hold someone else accountable or bl or victim blame or blame like the external uh, circumstances or the other party involved or blaming ourselves you know like th that doesn't yeah I mean it has value to teach us but it doesn't serve the whole any longer and so like let's yeah, what are we moving away from and what are we moving towards? Are we moving towards claiming that responsibility and taking that accountability? Or are we still wanting to yell and scream and blame someone else and blame our circumstances and blame like the villain or blame the bad guy or the, the abandoning cruel one? Um, blame like ourselves for not being worthy. Blame the others for not being worthy um, with our bullshit measurement sticks and like our expectations and uh, stuck locked into opposition um, maybe it comes and stems from ideal idealism and resentments I mean I know that's a big part of it for me and so I've been working through those things and um, yeah the need to please the need to please and be pleasing and to, and to be pleased and yeah yeah there's a lot of our um, our blocks right there and, and yeah there's a whole lot more to that and yeah those have been things um, challenges for me that I have been willing to meet and explore and examine and just like kind of let go of and kind of let these patterns and these archetypes and these feelings and these stories reveal themselves to me um, through like that seeing instead of like trying to figure it out all out logically or trying to attempt to control it um, so that I could feel more secure or in control or protect myself from more pain or feelings of shame, rejection, um, guilt, um, all of that. And so I, I feel like a lot of you will probably and can probably relate to certain things and themes that I'm expressing. And so, yeah, I just wanted to share a few things about what I've learned this week and how like a lot of those new um, ways of seeing and uh, perceiving, but opening up true vision um, through my dreams, through paying attention to my dreams and recalling my dreams and working with and through my dreams, like through the messages they had for me and really being willing to look at it um, in a detached way, um, in an impersonal way, but also acknowledge that it was showing me things about my person, my personal world or my personality and like seeing different archetypes and things. And it's easy to sometimes like um, point the finger of blame or keep on the blame game or the, <laughs> the train of blame and yeah to kind of feel justified or right or whatever that ego need is to feel like more in control and feel all right and it's just like it doesn't need to yeah we don't need to control or manipulate any of that really 
Like if we can let some of that shit go, some of that old bullshit. Yeah. And be in flow and, and allow it to be revealed and shown to us in its own time, in our own time. Um, yeah, to remind and change our minds and really see what's being asked of us and honor like the opportunities and the gifts um, and the lessons that we've been given and that we can choose to acknowledge, honor, and receive and allow um, to help us like grow, change, and navigate, like navigate through this new time of awakening that we are in. And so, yeah, there's a lot of themes about sleeping, awakening, dreaming, all of that, and, and living and being and becoming. And so, yeah, I'm just like fascinated right now too, like with the three aspects of creation. Yeah, like the creator, the sustainer, and the destroyer. And like, wow, honoring all those three like parts of, yeah, continuity. <laughs> so I did want to share some dreams and some themes coming up for me because they did offer me a lot of insights and clarity because, yeah, like I said, and like I've said before, we all have our blind spots and um, sometimes we all have our filters and our own biases and our own um, layers that we've used to protect ourselves or to keep us like kind of, yeah, um, clueless and almost pretty dumb, you know, like playing, we're playing at being dumb sometimes and that's okay too, like, because, you know, like we've learned that, like to protect ourselves and sometimes we don't want to see certain things because they're hard to see and they're painful to see and we don't, yeah, we have a hard time sometimes, like admitting that we're wrong. I mean, and because of our pride, um, because like, yeah, we don't feel like we're going to be worthy or we can't, we're, we've been unable to like forgive ourselves for our mistakes and we like to punish ourselves or maybe we just feel the need or there's some kind of program that reinforces that need to punish ourselves again and again and again and again for the same mistakes and punish each other and punish, yeah, punish ourselves and keep us in that like prison of pain. And so, yeah, um, it's, the t it is a time where yeah, to really go inside and, and listen and seek that inner guidance or ask that inner guidance to help us, um, to help us see what we need to see and have courage and trust and faith and yeah, really own our accountability, our power and our bullshit. Like all of it helps. <laughs> helps us change and be who we are and um, create, like create what we want and desire and like what our soul really like is asking for. And so yeah, with all of that being said, I'm going to just take a minute and because there is so much really to say and to share and to express, but um, yeah. So humor, <laughs> humor too, like not taking ourselves so seriously and, um, and everything so personally too, like, cause we have the tendency to do that. Like, what did I do wrong? Or was it something that I did? Or was it something that I didn't do? Or how could I have changed this? And like, or how can I make it like more comfortable? How can I make it easier for myself? Which is all that is good and that is great, but sometimes we're blocking ourselves by thinking there's only one right way to protect ourselves or to, um, or to allow ourselves to be. Um, and so let's allow ourselves our fullness and our foolishness and um, allow the wisdom to emerge and come forth and through. So, yeah, because we're all of it, we contain all of it, <laughs> so, yeah, but humor is good <laughs> to remember, <laughs> and, and to remember to be the fool, too, like, because, yeah, if we can remember that, like, 
where we can remember it's okay and that we're just playing and we're learning and we're growing. And like change is a blessing and it's the essence of life. Renew what you are for what you could become. And it's like, we haven't seen anything yet really, like what we're capable of or, you know, what, yeah, how powerful we really are. Like, and how beautiful and amazing, like we truly, truly are. And so like, if we can accept like uh, the parts that we've, been, you know, been taught to see as dirty or unworthy or blemished or yeah, just not enough. Yeah, then, I mean, like, gosh, can't we claim our own power, too, and our own beauty, and our own strength, and our own potential, and, like, all of it, like, claiming all of it to be, like, all of it to be true, to all of it, to all we are, to who we are, to who we really are, and um, honor, like, our part in the whole and, and all of it. And so, like, just practicing this wisdom and, like, yeah, learning this wisdom and applying this wisdom and being willing to work with it and play with it, like, yeah, and integrate it and, like, allow it to teach me and not, like, cling to it as, like, a dogma, but allow it to flow through me and teach me and show me and move through me, yes, to, to like, be that container, to hold that. It's taught me so much in the last four years, five years, but especially this year, like where I've really had an opportunity to really get and dig in and and go deep and um, yeah, dive into it and immerse myself in it because I mean, gosh, it was either that answering the call or like it was really abandoning my soul and so I'm not abandoning myself anymore and I'm yeah I'm not willing to compromise that anymore and so yeah that was my choice my devotion to the love that I have and the love that I am to be uncomfortable to get messy to get dirty and I'm still working on those things I'm still changing I'm still learning every day I mean there's so much that we have the opportunity to learn every single day and every single moment um, through all of our relationships, through all the relationships that like make us like um, who we are. I mean, because we, yeah, we don't exist unto ourselves alone, but we are all one. And um, yeah, we exist because of every single relationship that we have and that we're, yeah, every single like part of creation that we're in relationship with. And so, yeah, it's pretty trippy in a lot of ways. So been breaking up old patterns and dissolving old patterns and, and seeing different patterns and dynamics at play. And yeah, there's a lot of emotion in that, like, oh, because it's, that's part of our energy, like how we get to create through those emotions, energy in motion, e-motion, energy in motion. And I really learned a lot about how I kept myself um, stuck and frozen when I wouldn't allow myself to feel or express or look at my feelings or, or be with my feelings, meet my feelings, um, allow myself to have them or feel them or, yeah, um, move through me. So yeah, that's just been one of my, like, wow, hugest lessons um, in that, like allowing myself and freeing that and still working on that, still working with that, still playing with that, and I'm willing. But like with all the layers that I have been able to penetrate and investigate and excavate, wow, just mind blown, freaking mind blown. And I'm just so grateful for like all of the help and the assistance and the guidance and the clarity and the vision, also the confusion because that plays a part and, um, and like, yeah, overthinking too is always like one of my strategies too, because I always want to understand everything <laughs> and I want to be understood. And so 
letting go of that need to understand sometimes, like if I can get out of my own way and letting go of the need to be understood. I'm still working with that. Like I want people to understand what I'm saying, like, and, and like what I'm really offering. But I've noticed certain things this week and, and this month and this year um, that sometimes people just, they won't understand what we're offering, what we're expressing, what um, we are trying to convey because they only see it through their own lens. And yeah, we all have that, like those different lenses. Sometimes we can only see through the lens like that what we allow ourselves to and it's an unconscious thing um, in a lot of ways. Um, when there is like sabotage and interference and different patterns that play into that. Um, but like, yeah, it's kind of funny in a lot of ways where we don't really hear or see what the other person is saying. We only see it through our own limitations or our own filter of perception um, through um, what we believe and what we're able to see or what we allow ourselves to see and so yeah I could express something to someone and because of their own insecurities or their own beliefs about themselves or where they think I'm coming from it's a totally different message than what I actually sent out you know, like, and I've seen that happen and it's just been so weird. Like, wow. Like, um, it's almost like telephone when we like, you know, speak a message and it goes around <laughs> and then at the end, like the message comes back and it's a totally different message than what actually was first sent out. And it's just like, that's how it plays out sometimes. And it's just, wow. So funny. But yeah, and the first time that I really got like a clear picture of that, it was very kind of interesting and silly to me. And it was a little bit frustrating too, because it was like, wow, you really got that from what I just said. <laughs> and I know like things can get misinterpreted and mistranslated over text too, but um, like, you know, without like the um, nonverbal um, communication and like the, uh, body language and gestures and uh, facial expressions and things like yeah it's even harder sometimes like when it's through electronics and when there's like certain interference that go along with that but yeah um so I was expressing gratitude um to a family member for um the efforts that they had put into a task and and I really meant it too like because I was really grateful like that they like really took the time and were attentive to um, cleaning up like certain things after themselves and like um, leaving the space in a good condition. And um, yeah, I felt like that was a, a really like um, an expression of thanks and respect. And so I wanted to share that and convey that. And so I sent them a text and said, hey, I you did a good job or a great job on, you know, the space. And I just, I'm really appreciative of your efforts. And I think I left it at that. But then the message that I received back was, I know it wasn't perfect, but I have had so much to do. And, you know, like, and I've had to do this and this and this, and this and this and this is going on. And like, I know it's, like it was kind of like kind of a message that I received as I know it wasn't up to your standards and it wasn't perfect and it wasn't what you wanted but I did my best and like yeah like kind of like in that almost like perfectionist victim like judge mentality and I was just like whoa like uh, I was just saying thank you you did a good job and I appreciate what you did and then your, the effort you put in and I was just kind of like taken aback for a minute. Like, I didn't say it wasn't perfect. I didn't say, it. yeah, it was just like, what, why, how did that <laughs> get translated into that? Or how did that get like, yeah, crossed like that? And I was just like, that's weird. That's, that's odd. That's confusing. And it was like, what lens and what, yeah, perception are we like really using or viewing or seeing through you know when it comes to all that 
And so then I started to see it on other levels too. And then also like kind of looking at myself where maybe I've done that. I mean, I have done that. I know that. So, um, yeah, just, um, because of my own machinations or, um, what I assume in certain ways, like, and, and the not enough too much stories are at play there too. And so like, it's our idealism, our bullshit measuring sticks, like who we think we're supposed to be or like, um, yeah, and those pedestal perfections and those expectations and and certain resentments that we have or, yeah, just that pedestal we think we have to live up to, to be worthy or to be enough. Yeah, all of that. So I was <laughs> looking at that. But I've seen that a couple few times in different relationships. Um, where I've been expressing certain things and I, and for me, like it is something that like, I want to be clear, transparent, um, as direct as I can be, but I know I like to sugarcoat things too, because I like to be pleasing and I want the, I want the comfort and I, and I want to feel comfortable and I want the other to feel comfortable. <laughs> and that's, yeah, that's one of the, my little things of, um, the idealists and, romantic at play there and and also just because it's the caregiver too and like in me and I just I don't know I just want to be nice and be kind and like have peace and civility like a peacemaker in me too um like and so sometimes I'll gloss over or brush aside certain things or sweep certain things under the rug because I don't want to focus on that I want to focus on the positive but yeah, sometimes that doesn't really serve us just to pretend to spiritually bypass like the confrontation or the, the, the grief or, um, I don't want to say complaint, but, um, maybe like, um, the root of the discomfort or, um, what needs to be addressed, what needs to be acknowledged, um, what needs to be called out, um, the things that we need, uh, that we get to ask for, um, the things that didn't sit right with us, the things that bothered us, uh, the things that hurt us. Um, like sometimes we're willing just to brush it off because like we want to let it go. We don't want to hold on to grudges, but like it's not holding the other person accountable in certain ways sometimes too, like for their actions or for their behavior, for their choices or for their part that they've played in it, you know? And not that I'm saying it's my job to hold <laughs> the other accountable, like, but I choose to be accountable. But I need to sometimes, like, be a little more honest and direct about those things instead of bypassing them and smoothing them over, making it comfortable. It's all good. It's okay. I know you didn't mean it. Like, make justifications and excuses. Like, I know, you know, we're, we all make mistakes. But, and it is true. Like, we do. And it's okay. We don't have to punish ourselves. But... Are we doing a disservice to ourselves, to our relationship, and one another, like dishonoring all of that through like not addressing like certain things that we need that play in and through all of that? So um, I hope that makes a little bit of sense. And if it doesn't, like, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but like it, it makes total sense to me. And so, um, yeah. I sent a message to a friend like last week and I was very clear. I felt very clear and I asked for guidance and I asked my heart to help me and it was like, wow, like being in that flow where I didn't even have to plan out what I was going to say or how I was going to say it. And it was, and I did ask for help like to, to um, serve the integrity of the whole and to be lovingly honest and kind. And I felt really good about it, like, after I was done expressing it. And, um, like, it was total truth. And, like, there was no, like, um, trying to smooth it over. But it was, like, um, yeah, it was just clear. And I felt like it was, yeah, it was exactly what I needed to express in the most loving, kind, um, 
way that expressed goodwill and my intentions and my choices and taking my accountability for things, being honest as I, as I could and owning my stuff, my part that I played in it and all of that. And um, I was just a little bit like shocked and <laughs> disappointed later um, when the other like kind of appeared to have missed like a bunch of different things that I had expressed um, and thought it meant something totally different or was taking it um, personally in a certain way where they were taking on the blame of it and like yeah it was just like a whole lot of mind um, traps and like maybe just being foggy or like having like a distortion of what was happening and why it was happening or um, because like it's uncomfortable sometimes to meet these things or to know that certain things are falling away or certain things are changing or like the other person in the relationship is changing and maybe like um, you know we're afraid of that loss of what we know or what we've had you know because we've been comfortable in it or because it's something familiar to us and that's comforting or because like yeah we're kind of afraid to take our responsibility and own up to what we need to and and certain things and so we kind of just put ourselves in self-doubt question what did we do what did we not do what did we do wrong what could we have <laughs> done better what can we do now to keep hold or to cling to you know this old way and like because we don't want to lose it or we're afraid of that loss and of change you know like and the new opportunity and the invitation to show up in new ways and so yeah I was just like kind of like a little bit yeah feeling yeah kind of feeling like strange about that like hmm like how can I express like what I'm how I'm really feeling in certain ways and not need to be pleasing or to be pleased like and yeah that was just like one of the things was it would have pleased me if they would have understood you know because yeah that was my ideal and my goal like for there to be understanding but like yeah I gotta let that go too sometimes and one of my dreams that I had this week um gosh there's been so many dreams this month I don't even know like really like they're all blurring together but um, one of them was kind of about that, like a couple days ago, where um, our loved ones may not always be able to hear us um, and what we're expressing, but at least we can be true to ourselves and um, honor ourselves and honor like that expression that we can offer. Like we can still offer um, you know, beautiful offerings, but that doesn't mean that they're going to be received in the ways that we would like them to be or um, understood in certain ways as we understand them. And so, like, yeah, just kind of looking at those things and, like, receiving some understanding my, for myself around those things. And so <laughs> that's awesome. Even though, like, the other didn't quite, you know, understand it's like I actually gained some understanding and some insight into it too because of that. So it was a gift. And yeah, it's a lot of changes and shifts and sometimes it's not comfortable at all. And uh, for anyone, and maybe like if we could just like let go of the need for it to be graceful, sterile, comfortable, then we could really get in there and get messy and do our work, you know, like, but we gotta be willing, like, and, <laughs> like, yeah, and also, like, just let some of that go, too, like, what we think it needs to be, or it's going to be, or it should be, and all of that, so, expectations, and idealism, and assumptions, and, and just, like, needs, ego needs, desires, like, for control, and all of that and survival strategies and patterns like that we've been playing in and through and oh uh, yeah it's amazing that <laughs> we're as well as we are with all of that like 
And yeah, we're so resilient, but man, yeah, we're so fragile too. And that's, yeah, our egos are pretty fragile as well. Um, and so that's why we like to cling to the old or cling to what we think we know and cling to old ways and old patterns because it makes us feel safe, but like it's really just like not uh, gonna like be that way anymore and it's collapsing and falling away. So it's time to show up in new ways and yeah, I guess we all need to learn that for ourselves in our own, in and through our own ways. And there isn't just one right way. There isn't one right way to see it. Like we all have our different like ways that we see or receive and take in. Um, yeah, all of these things. So yeah, just being aware of that and, and, and seeing like my tendency to want them to understand it on all the levels that I do or that I'm receiving it or as it's coming through for me like sometimes I just want to share that but like um, I get to let go of that and just offer what I see and then let the other see whatever they'll see or receive whatever they need or receive whatever they choose or what they're able to so yeah all those things and letting go letting go of control and all of these things and overthinking about it too because that's been fun <laughs> and I just gotta laugh at myself because it can go in a loop and it can cycle again and again and again and through until we're like oh wait <laughs> and then like we get that aha Eureka clarity or oh, and it opens up to us like in the yeah the fog is cleared and all of that so that was funny so cheers <laughs> turmeric ginger tea been doing like a lot of yeah um, wellness uh, contributing things and choices for me and yeah, doing my best to work with that and uh, be a friend to me. And uh, as I'm going through all my changes, I know it's not easy. Like It's not easy for others in relationship with us when we're going through changes too because it brings up stuff for them and it triggers them. And sometimes it's hard, yeah, in that like container, like <sighs> that we're outgrowing and yeah. And sometimes people want to suck us back in or keep us there with them. But like, it is like a gift of love to be able to free ourselves and free them too. And, and yeah, forgive, forgive ourselves and forgive them for they know not what they do. And, and for ourselves for not knowing like what we do now. And also, yeah, um, forgive ourselves or hurting ourselves or hurting each other or making mistakes and um, being against ourselves or being at war with ourselves and um, recycling that pain again and again and, and not knowing like that there is another way but yeah that there are there are infinite ways infinite ways to heal grow and change and that's what who we are and that's who we get to be so we're just all on our own journey, walking each other home and returning home, returning to source, returning to love, returning to the love we are, remembering and, and letting go of like who we believe, think, or feel, or see that we are in favor of like envisioning and embodying that vision. Um, embodying that vision and anchoring it in uh, to this new way of being, operating, cooperating, and um, contributing, and being a part of the whole um, opening, yeah, and closing. So the doors are opening and closing at this time, and so yeah, it's a huge time of transition, and uh, it's all of it. Oh, and powerful, powerful, potent time leading up to the solstice soon the 14th today and um, 
I had some tarot cards out in front of me and some medicine cards out in front of me that I uh, put out last week. And just the ones that like kind of were, yeah, just popped out at me. Like I uh, just decided, I mean, seriously, I work with all of them, but like some of them, like it kind of through intuition, it gives me a little hint of like what energies I'll be working with too. And that's pretty cool and fun to like look at them and speculate about them. But then um, as things are unfolding, actually seeing more <laughs> into all of it and like how, yeah, certain things fit in uh, with the energetic patterns at play and the energy that's available. And um, what qualities are available to work with, um, utilize, call in and forth and through to help us navigate like, through, like, yeah, these changes and this like process of healing and being and becoming and remembering and awakening and so and dreaming. So, um, what I have out on my table here is the Empress and the Temperance, Temperance number 14, and the Emperor. And those are together. Um, the Emperor and the Empress um, are like the two, and then the middle is Temperance. And then um, below that is the Wheel of Fortune and the Devil on either side. And in the middle of that is the Hierophant, the inner teacher. <laughs> so, in a way, I feel like I'm getting my ass kicked but in another way it's like I don't know it's a cosmic trick because it's like helping me birth into being all I've ever wanted and um, and like the truth of like my love and my soul and yeah it's just like holding the tension of all of it and then like letting the third come through like yeah tempering the wisdom and um, claiming the resources and knowing that my inner teacher is there to guide me and so are so many beautiful guides and angels and allies and friends and teachers and companions and yeah just feeling grateful for all that um, and yeah and loving it and yeah even though it's been a little tricky and hard to be yeah with it some a lot of a lot of it like sometimes I just want to yeah escape in certain ways and I'm, I'm looking at those survival strategies but like really I am like I've shown up more this year in my life than I ever have like in being true to myself and so that feels really amazing and I'm really like freaking blessed like I feel so blessed there's been so many opportunities just because my willingness to like um, allow and to like let go and to trust and just to be and just to allow myself and to allow what is now and like yeah just all the feelings that go along with it and tracking the stories and the myths and like looking seeing the archetypes at play and like also like clearing certain things and cleansing certain things and sorting through things like not just like physical things like where I was sorting through some of my junk and I found treasures but like it's all of it like on so many energetic and emotional and um like lower and higher mental levels as well like wow and just like um, yeah just creativity too like working with it because it's a creative process and um, yeah and <laughs> this is just playing and it's the best way like um, to learn and to heal and to grow and um, to see things through that innocent child through unself consciousness and um, without the need to punish ourselves like for not getting it right or for not being enough or for being too much and all of that so like getting such good lessons in that and with that and through that so I think like all this wisdom and um, the divine feminine wisdom and this alchemy of the goddess and like who I am and all who are in relationship with me I bless praise thank and celebrate all of this and 
the life death life cycles even though it's really hard um, to let certain things go and like certain things that I wanted for wanted or hoped for like to let them go like because I know that something even better um, will come through if I'm willing to let go and trust in the flow and, and what is being offered and um, yeah the gifts like that are available right now to receive and to free and to be and to seed and dream yeah so yeah um, my yeah my medicine cards that are out right now are alligator for 50 integration four deer it's like gentleness and faith and then armadillo armadillo um, 28 boundaries and shields for protection so yeah I've been working with armadillo alligator and deer and yeah yeah thanking them for their medicine and their support and their like their qualities and their um yeah their willingness to share to help us to help me um yeah claim my power to claim my bullshit, uh to claim my abilities to trust me to trust in the love there is for me and the path and the journey and enjoy like enjoy being enjoy the ride and allow the process and yeah let Letting go, letting go, letting go, letting go. So, yeah, armadillo, though, the shields, um, the shields that we put in place. Um, what are we willing to experience? What do we want to create? And what don't, like, what don't we want? It's good to know, it's good to be aware what we don't want and what we do, like, want. I like to be clear in certain ways. And do you have clear intentions as much as we can or as much as we're able to and like yeah knowing where our boundaries are because I haven't known that like in a lot of ways I haven't known where my boundaries are because I've had a hard time with differentiation and being the sponge and soaking everything up and thinking everything was mine to carry or yeah and buying into those uh, not enough too much stories and always thinking I had to manipulate myself or manipulate some kind of perception so that I would be seen as worthy or enough and so like yeah really kind of seeing that and clearing all that up um, and then yeah so I might follow my own advice and um, do my own medicine shields with that with armadillo and uh, maybe I'll share yeah some medicine uh, that I've learned this year from, yeah, working with the medicine cards and our animal companions, our spirit totems and our guides and our family, our kin. Um, yeah, these wonderful gifts of creator and creation um, that have like so much to offer, give and really be for themselves. And like, they just so are so generous, like really like, wow, um, through all their ways. And so, like, just, like, calling on those resources, calling in those resources, asking for help, listening, and being willing to receive and um, free myself to receive. <laughs> yeah, and open and, like, yeah, allow that to be. So, with that said, yeah, I would just like to read, like, just a few dreams there's so many and there's been so many and all of them would probably work perfectly but I'm just flipping this open and seeing what page I land on here and there's so many um, things so oh it's funny I um I opened this page um, that says, and the ways that it came about, so very funny, choosing what I wanted and following through with honor, openness, kindness, generosity, allowance, permission, disclosure, or transparency, boundaries, willingness, goodwill, intentions, joy, 
playfulness, consideration, happy accidents though. It's how it all works, plays out, LOL. Overthinking, LOL, had and has its great share of lessons for me. And I've written down some archetypes. Storyteller, dreamer, mystic, lover, poet, weaver, creator, destroyer, gives and takes away, mercy, severity, balance in between, artist, student teacher, fool and wisdom keeper, high priestess and magician, child mother, eager beaver, deer, alligator, armadillo, I'm so funny, wow, um, antics, oh, and antics of the, a watch for the antics of the nitpicker, the judge, the victim, the whore, uh, the thinker, the pleaser, wounded child, martyr, orphan, addict, ghost. Um, and then I have in little parentheses, Atlas and Mother Superior. But yeah, there was another three um, animal companions I had written down to snake, coyote, and spider. So yeah, there is beaver, deer, alligator, armadillo, snake, coyote, spider, spider. oh, and then bat and crow. That's kind of funny that, like, yeah, I was talking about them and they show up and when I flipped open my page. And then I have at the bottom here, Temperance, temperance the Fool, the Empress, the Emperor, the Devil, the Wheel, the Hanged Man, and Rock On. I have had put, like, a, this lapis stone <laughs> on top of my Hanged Man for some reason. <laughs> and so, like... Uh, just like, yeah, this is kind of something funny that I like kind of noticed in a way and It's just like keep on keeping on <laughs> rock on <laughs> You're doing good Just yeah, hang upside down and keep hanging around. And, yeah Turn it around or just let it be round and just go around and around until <laughs> Until yeah, I'm found Yeah, let it be found and then I uh, have the lovers and strength here. And also um, Cleopatra was an archetype that I was working with at the time too, like through some artwork. And uh, mother of dragons, triple goddess, dark Madonna, Christos Sophia, Anana and Ereshkigal, dual sisters as one. Such cool things let it go, let it be, let it play out through love's true well-being. Show up and be a part of it, be whole, be in the world, but not of it. Be real, be true, be love in it. Be you, be full, be all of it. Be love, be true, be full of it, lol. Be love, be you, be love for it. See love in it, free love in it, be love with it. Be love a gift, be love and shift. Shift the frequency, shift the reality. Creativity and permission to be intuition and letting it be projecting new images onto the screen be aware of what i want and choose to take into me dreaming manifesting brand new dreams goodwill good intent focus love for we freedom for all freedom for me freedom for one love freedom for all beings that's fun and awesome way I just flipped open to December 8th, and maybe I'll just share some of that since that's what it is. Um, that was Tuesday last week. Whoa, yesterday was I was pretty tired but feeling intense emotional highs and also fatigue of the body-mind, but I did some great work also and was as present and clear and connected as I could be in the moment, be aware, and be here. Uh, I did feel some rushes and bliss and waves of this new energy coming in, today feeling a bit more centered and grounded, rested, and also like a fog has lifted and cleared. Maybe a day to anchor in and root in. I found myself feeling or searching for that bliss bunny magic or those fatigue-induced emotional highs and desire type connections. Interesting, like chasing or expecting that and feeling a little disappointed or let down. LOL. Silly being being silly. Let go of the ride, shields in place, level up, be here now, and don't give up, but let go of how I think it's supposed to be and feel to be to be all it gets to be for me and we. Lots of healing taking place, lots of love, so much grace. What do I get to choose today? What wants to be offered, shared, given, built, attended to, and received? What wants to be expressed, moved through, and allowed to be, or come into and through my being, or come through from within to be received, retrieved, reordered, released, reclaimed, and freed? 
breakthroughs and ahas. I have received so much. Thank you. Grateful and humbled, inspired, motivated, excited, curious, and a little frightened. Ha ha. Must be on the right track and stretching comfort zones, challenging myself and my rigidities to let go of resistance and blocks. Oh, that was the day that I went through some of my papers. Um, I went through my old mementos papers, junk and shit, and I've been storing and holding on to old papers, letters, schoolwork, mostly my daughter's, um, that kind of thing. It's always been my kryptonite, so that's pretty, that's partly why I've put it off all this time until now. And wow, does it feel good to feel lighter now that all that is completed and sorted through, and much was thrown away and recycled, yay. More room and more space, cleaning it up like a boss, free it up. Tired today, a bit sluggish, but there's value in the floppy and love is enough. Yeah, yay. That was awesome. Um, what I just flip to now. Um, it says opening, softening, shedding, letting go, bit by bit, I choose to let go. Personal mastery, personal strength. Don't need to prove myself or prove that I'm any one thing. Don't need to watch myself and obsess over things to prove to myself that I exist. Silly me. Personal power, personal will, personal choice, personal mastery, personal responsibility. And free my love, mind, thought, will, intention, attention, focus, direction. Follow my heart and choose my direction. Rise, rise, rise like a flame. Rise, shine, rise. I choose to live again. Rise from the ashes like a phoenix. From the flame, rise from the ashes, and rooted, be here once again, as one again. Be love again, be all I am. What a good day, feels lighter and brighter than yesterday, although I appreciate the value in the floppy and all that holds for me. Lessons in integration and an opportunity to step back, come back, and be right here with me. And forgiveness is key, and I spelled key um, two different ways, um, K-E-Y slash K-I. For reclaiming, forgiveness is key for reclaiming all that belongs to me or is meant for me and to retrieve or to receive and be grateful for the confirmations today and all the healing taking place and processing happening. So. And then there was a dream that I had that I don't think I'm going to go into right now because it's a little bit long. But, um, yeah, I did want to share, like, a short, kind of interesting little dream that goes along with some of these themes. Oh, okay, yeah, this one's perfect. So, I was having a dream about a confrontation with a friend. Um, there's been some shaken up and some a need to break it up like break up these old patterns in our dynamic and our old relationships and it's been a theme this year for me like being the codependent and the martyr and the caregiver and those kinds of things and when I did look at those kinds of things I actually did see where I was playing into like some of those narcissistic tendencies in showing up in those ways and that was interesting for me to see and own and um, kind of eat crow and swallow my own pride about it because yeah I mean like it wasn't like um the first time that I saw it, that was the hardest thing. It was like, holy shit, I can see where I've been a narcissist. And that was kind of like a little bit like, <gasps> like hard for me to swallow in certain ways, but I know like it goes along with the codependent and like that's how they operate together. So we have both of them at play within ourselves and um, playing in and through our relationships where we reverse those roles in certain ways with each other and yeah through that relationship or through different relationships that we have and dynamics at play. So um, there is a confrontation with a friend that I was having. We were jogging up waterfalls and I, when I was writing down this, um, I wrote water walls and it was like kind of a Freudian slip. So yeah, like it was blocks for me, like in, in certain ways. And I'll go into that maybe in a little bit. But yeah, we're jogging up waterfalls and going upstream and I put return to source question mark. And then um, the Freudian slip about the water walls, not the path of least resistance or is this like a return to source, like how the salmon do it? Like, you know, like that's what it seemed like in the dream, like how the salmon go upstream back to where they were born so they can lay their eggs and all that. 
that's what, yeah, some of that seemed like it was kind of a challenge, but like, yeah, it was like something that we got to do. So my friends being dramatic about being dissed during this jogging because I didn't talk to her or give her what she thought she needed or wanted or expected I should give her. She was pointing the finger and calling me out for not responding to her while I was focused on the task or the journey at hand. Um, something about how she can juggle talking and running up the fall, so why can't I? And I was like, well, you may be able to multitask like that with your energy, but I need to focus on my needs. And don't try to pin it on me and make me the bad guy for not doing it your way or meeting your expectations. And I'm annoyed with her because she's a heavyweight and she feels hostile, overbearing, demanding, and playing the entitled victim not taking accountability for her own stuff and um, her own desires, needs, and expectations and resentments and her own power to be who she needs. So um, a sister of mine is also there or she was or had a part to play in my dreams. Oh well, they're not pleased with me and I'm because I'm not going along with the old patterns of being pleasing or fawning or making it about their needs. And there are some themes about strategy and choices, intentions and structuring, creating, also making excuses for certain behaviors and not owning accountability and intentions. So who's playing the virtuous victim and the wounded child or entitled slave? So I'll own all that, like where I played those roles or played into those roles or played at being those. Um, yeah, because of my ego needs. And um, then there's the entrepreneur, the vendor, and the seller of snake oil or something of value. Oh, because this was a, maybe like the previous dream. The, something that stuck out was not the number 50 and the number two, doubling profits while offering a product or a service. Um, is this a strategy or is it a con job? Is it busyness or is it is it business? business? And uh, I see how avoidance machin machinations and mechanisms were used to justify or defend my choices and to keep the pattern going again and again. And that, like, I totally have come to a realization that taking care of others and being the caregiver was a way to distract myself from what I really needed, from my own needs, and from my intimacy that's available for me. It was something to keep it at arm's length. So I could busy myself to take on other people's stuff and other people's, because yeah, I like to do that. I like to give that, but I understand now that it was a way for me to uh, block myself from really receiving and being with like what I really need and what I get to create and what I get to dream. And so that's huge for me because yeah, that's huge for me to see. And so, um, breaking it up and breaking up is hard to do. Old patterns. Letting go of resistance and fears that blocked true love, sharing joy and intimacy. Cutting away all that is no longer mine to carry or hold on to. I thank thee. And so, yeah, I think I will end it there. And, um, yeah, that's a good place to be. And to begin again. <laughs> so... Happy new moon. I hope it's a potent time for all of you. I hope, yeah, like all of this yumminess and sweetness and like everything you need is coming up and through to be cleared, to be cleansed, to be honored, acknowledged, worked with, played with, freed, and yeah, alchemized, transmuted, um, transformed, and like, yeah, appreciated, valued and appreciated. And like the opportunities that are here and available now to receive are huge. And so like if we're just willing to like let go of our need to be comfortable and we're open to receive like what's being given, um, this is like this little picture my little niece gave me. She's seven. She wanted me to color this for her and I started on it and it was a good message for me. It says, I rejoice in everything the universe has taught me today. And so this is a good reminder. And there's the moon, the new moon and the stars and the unicorn, innocence, unselfconsciousness, and like remembering who we are. So with that said, love and blessings and happy alchemy and happy new moon and happy planting, happy seeding, happy dreaming. 
and be with all of the pain or the grief and the closure of the endings, letting go, making space, making room for the new, for the new true fool to come through. Okay, love you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye for now.